So you want to be a better, faster, safer driver. Well, I've got three advanced driving tips for you today. In this video, I actually have two driving tips and a third driving game that you can play on your way to work, on your way to the shops. It's really fun and it will improve your forward planning and your thinking and your decision making as it comes to driving. That one's coming right at the end, so make sure you stick around for that one, it's really cool. So with these three examples, I'm gonna talk you through them first, but then I've got point of view, actual examples of me doing this in real life, on the road. I wanna stress that these are advanced driving tips. They're not appropriate for every situation. There is an element of forward planning and thinking that you have to undertake when you're deciding whether to use these advanced driving maneuvers. Some of them can go very wrong if you use them in the wrong circumstance. If you're gonna implement these tips into your driving, you do a logical thought process and you make sure that you're using them in the right way. I am a new YouTuber, so it's understandable that not that many of you are actually subscribed. At the moment, only 6% of my viewers are subscribed. So please, subscribe. The visibility line is a slight variation on how to take the line through a corner with a focus on visibility. This is something they actually teach at the Institute of Advanced Motorists. This is really, really useful on blind corners where you have hedgerows or bushes or trees on the inside of the corner. I have a visual example for you here. This is a line you would normally take if you wanted to go around a corner smoothly and quickly. It's commonly known as the racing line. It can be used on the road just to have the smoothest line for a corner. Now we have what I'm going to call the visibility line in green. As you can see, the line starts off the same as the racing line. You start as wide as you can in the corner, but then you continue through the widest part of the corner all the way around the outside of the corner. The closer you are to the apex of the corner, the less you can see because at the apex is where the bushes, the trees, the obstacles will be. So the further you can get from the apex, the more your visibility opens up and the more you can see. Let's get into some on-road examples. So most people here would be tempted to take the racing line, to come out to the side and cut across inside. But no, we're gonna take the visibility line. We're gonna stay on the outside of this corner and then we're gonna move to the outside of this corner. It gives us so much more visibility. We can see what's coming sooner. And again, blind corner, we'll stay on the outside and we'll go round. We'll hug this white line here. Ah, oh, well, this one is really important. Such a tight corner, we stick to the outside, go all the way around the outside. Now, if you're gonna do this, you've gotta have some balls because if somebody is coming the other way and they cut across the white line even a little bit, you're gonna use your wing mirror, you're gonna have a bad day. So be very careful when you do this. But the good news is you'll see them coming before you normally would. So it means re reacting to those situations is a little bit easier. And when it comes to this stuff, don't be too worried. You would be surprised by how wide lanes actually are. This is still in the lane. And over here is still in the lane. Haven't touched the white lines. Like watch this. We're not leaving the lane on any of those maneuvers. So you'd be surprised just how wide the lane actually is, even if you think it's a narrow country road. There's a lot more room either side of your car than you think. And you will be shocked at how much your vision is improved just by doing that small thing. The second advanced driving tip we have is to straight line roundabouts. What are you talking about, Mick? you should use the correct lane around a roundabout. Yes, that's true. But in certain situations, you can go straight across roundabouts, even when there are two lanes. It will make you faster, it will make you smoother, it will make you more efficient. But once again, I have to stress, you have to be very careful with when you choose to do these maneuvers because it can go very wrong. Once again, I have a diagram. So here you can see the correct way to go around a multi-lane roundabout. If you're going straight ahead, you should use the left lane and you should go all, all the way around the left lane and exit in the left lane. That is completely correct. What you can do is you can enter from the left lane 
and go straight across the roundabout into the second lane and back out into the first lane and exit like that. This will make you faster, this will make you smoother, and on certain roundabouts, it's really fun and it feels really good to just maintain your momentum and not slow down. Here are some on-road examples of me doing exactly that. In these clips, I actually have an example of where I did it incorrectly. Hopefully you can learn from my mistake. So this is a roundabout that has two lanes coming into it, but we're gonna go straight across both of them if the opportunity arises, which I think it will. There's no one on the other side of the road. There's no one coming. You can see the two entry lanes. We're gonna go left to right to left. Super efficient, just means I don't have to touch the brakes. I don't have to slow down. I don't have to hurt my momentum. I can just keep going. It can honestly be so fun to do because you go so much faster. So there's nobody entering the roundabout, coming at the left, cut into the right. <laughs> Nobody was harmed, nobody was endangered, but it's just so much fun. And it feels so good because you, you keep so much momentum. Here's a great example of how you shouldn't do this. Pay attention to the learner driver that's just trying to enter the roundabout. This maneuver could really confuse someone if you do it at the wrong time, just like I did it in this clip. Even from a standstill, to be honest, I've got nobody in this lane, so. But I have to stress, you have to be very careful. You can only do this if there's no car on your inside, if there's no car waiting to go around the roundabout. You have to be very particular about how you do this maneuver. So the third and final tip is not a tip, it's actually a game. You can play the no brake game. The way you play this game is essentially your goal is to not touch the brake pedal for your entire journey. Obviously, if there's a situation that develops and you have to brake, then you must brake. It is necessary to use the brakes sometimes. But the idea of the game is that you do not brake. So you try to plan as far ahead as you can. If there's a roundabout coming or a traffic light that could turn red, you lift up off the gas and you use your gears in order to slow down. Now this teaches you a few things. It teaches you to really plan far ahead, anticipate what's going to happen down the road. It also really improves your fuel economy because as we know, when you're in gear and off the gas, you have infinite miles per gallon in modern cars. It also, if you do this on a country lane or a road with lots of bends and corners, it can really teach you to be smooth on the throttle, smooth on the steering, smooth with your gear changes. This game is best played in a manual transmission car. So if you have a manual car, you're off to the races, you can really control your speed with the clutch and by changing gears. But you can also do this in an automatic. I highly recommend you put your car in manual mode if you have an automatic and use the gears to help you slow down because if you stay in a high gear and you just lift off the gas, you will do next to no slowing down. So you really have to use the gears. Let's get into some on the road examples to see how this actually plays out. There's a roundabout coming up. We're on a slight incline and I've lifted off already. There's nothing coming from that side. We are not gonna break. We're gonna keep our momentum all the way around the roundabout. And then we're immediately gonna start thinking about what we're doing at the next one. But especially on the motorway, this is very doable. You can drive for hundreds of miles without ever touching the brakes. Um, I'm off the gas and I'm actually gonna have a downshift and another downshift. And keep coasting on down. Still haven't touched the brakes. I think we can make it through this one, but the tricky bit is gonna be stopping after the next one. All the downshifts, oh, we just about missed it. I had to dab the brakes there. I'm already off the gas because of the red light that's come up. And let's see if we can time this just right. I'm gonna have another downshift. There's no one behind me to annoy. Oh, look at that. Love it. I actually think if you're gonna play this game, make sure you put your car in sport mode or a sportier mode, especially if you have an automatic transmission. It will just make the transmission lock up a bit better. Um, give you more engine braking when you change gears. Now the no brake game gets really difficult when you're going at national speed limits. 
There's two cars ahead of me and I've got a big gap behind. So I've actually lifted off already. We're coming into a roundabout in about <laughs> probably a mile. And I know that around this corner, there's also a speed limit change. What's amazing with no brake game is uphill because uphill, I'm just gonna lift off the gas and the speed's gonna come right down. It's really nice and easy. But we've got a roundabout now. We're going right at this roundabout and we've got to make sure that we can make it around without braking. So I've taken a super low gear. I think we can make that nice. Once you're in the roundabout, it's a little bit easier, I think. All good. The trickiest part is definitely getting into the roundabout. So there's a roundabout coming up. I've already lifted. There is some traffic in the way. Okay, it's cleared. Come on, let there be nobody there. Yes! <laughs> we made it. Once you're on the roundabout, it's a lot easier. It's getting on the roundabout that's the really difficult part. So hopefully you've really enjoyed this educational video. If you found this video valuable for everyday driving and you wanna get faster at driving on the road, click this video up here. It will teach you three tips to make your driving faster.